Welcome to EPG Pacha lecture series on data analytics. In this session, we will be continuing with the topic data visualization. As part of this session, we will be first understanding the broad classification of visualization techniques followed by data visualization techniques which may be used for understanding one and two variable data. So, let us start with what is visualization. I think we discussed this in the previous session. So, data visualization fundamentally refers to a technique or set of techniques which are used for visualizing data or information by encoding it as visual objects. For example, like points, lines or bars that are contained in a graphics. So, fundamentally we are transforming data into a graphical format. Now, when we are trying to visualize the data, what is very important and to be noted is the data size and column composition because the size of data and column composition plays a very major role when we are trying to visualize the given data set. Now, let us understand what are the broad ways by which you can categorize visualization techniques. We can categorize this based on how we categorize the data itself. We have analyzed the data as a single variable, two variable, combination of two or more variables and based on this way itself, we can also categorize the visualization techniques. So, we can have visualization techniques specifically for one variable data, separately for two variable data and visualization techniques for data sets that involve two or more variables and finally, the remaining types of visualization techniques can be put under others category. Let us take each and every type of visualization technique and understand them in detail. We will start with one variable. We all know histogram is a very famous and commonly used visualization technique for statistics and for what type of variable it works well is it works for a single variable. Now, what is the use of histogram? Histogram actually shows the center, in other words, the mean or average of a given data, variability of the data, skewness and modality of a given data. All these things like the average, variability, skewness and modality are different types of statistics about a given single variable. Also, in certain scenarios, outliers or strange patterns can also be easily understood or visualized by histograms. When we are constructing an histogram for a given data set, there are different parameters which you need to consider like the bin width and the position of the histogram. Because the bin width and the position of the bar indicates different meanings for different types of data. Sometimes we may even have a particular value 0 which is considered to be very important in the given scenario rather than ignoring the zeros. So, in a histogram when you visualize zeros there will not be any bar indicating the zero count and we may treat that to be say a nil value and hence we sometimes may ignore the zero values available in the given data. You can take a look at the histograms highlighted in this slide. The first figure in this given slide indicates the frequency that is the histogram for diastolic BP patients and here the x axis is divided into equal bins of width 10 and the bars here indicate the frequency of occurrence of the diastolic BP and you may find the BP in the range of 60 to 80 has occurred more number of times. In the second histogram in the same slide, you can find the bin width has been reduced and therefore, you can see the number of diastolic BP and its frequency information varying within the given range 60 to 80. So, originally here in this figure, all the values diastolic BP in the range of 60 to 80 were considered to be one single information, but here the same has been bifurcated into two. Now, when you take a look at the x axis, you can find the bin width is 10. Therefore, within the range 60 to 80, for example, you can find two separate bars 
highlighting the two bins. If you take a look at the third histogram for the same information, here the bin width has been reduced, so it is going to be 5. So, if you take a particular range 60 to 80, it will be divided into 4 bins and you can find 4 different bars highlighting 4 different types of diastolic BP. Now, what is that we can understand from this is based on the bin width and based on the position of the bar, the meaning conveyed is completely different. Sometimes, if a particular value is 0, though the value 0 has occurred more number of time in the given data set, when you plot it as a histogram, we may treat 0 exactly along the x axis and therefore, there will not be any bar highlighting the number of frequencies, the number of zeros that has occurred in the given data set. So, in such scenarios, the count of 0 will be missed. So, in such scenarios, we will have to be very careful with respect to the y axis highlighting the frequencies for various parameter or along the x axis. What are the issues with respect to histograms? Suppose, if it is going to be a small data set, the histograms sometimes may be misleading. The reason is even when there is a small change in the bin size or in case if there is a small change in the data itself, the histogram may be misleading. Suppose, if it is a very large data set means then the histogram can be quite effective and this is in general correct for very large data sets. Histograms are more effective on a single variable rather than multiple variable. So, we will have to consider twice before using histogram and what are the parameters that you should think about is the size of the data and the number of variables with which we are going, trying to analyze the data. The second type of visualization for single variable is box plot which is also called as box or whisker diagram. This is a standardized way by which you can represent the distribution of data. The distribution of data can be visualized in 5 parameters. The first parameter is minimum, the second parameter is the first quartile, third is median, fourth and fifth are the third quartile and the maximum respectively. Now, we visualize the given data in the form of a very simple rectangular box and this box actually spans the first quartile to the third quartile, which is also called as the interquartile range. The segment inside the rectangle actually shows the median and the whiskers. Normally, the whiskers highlight the minimum and the maximum value. You can now visualize the five parameters which I explained in this diagram. So, this is a box plot and in this box plot, you can find the data is being divided into four regions, the first quarter region, second, third and then the fourth. Normally, the middle two quartile ranges indicate the correct data and the data that is in the first quartile and the last quartile may be considered as outliers. So, now when you take a look at this diagram, you can have a minimum, you can have a maximum. This minimum and maximum indicates the actual minimum and maximum values in the given data set. But if you want to consider the correct minimum and maximum excluding the outliers, then the first quartile and the third quartile can act as the minimum and maximum and this range is called as the interquartile range in short IQR. The line inside this box is called as the median line. The median line indicates the center value in the given data set. So, when you take a look at this diagram, you can get lots of information like the median, the interquartile range, the outliers, the actual range, skewness, etcetera, etcetera. What are the drawbacks with respect to this given box plot is, suppose if you are dealing with box plot, there is a chance for over plotting and sometimes the distribution shape is cannot be predicted very easily and there is no standard implementation with respect to various softwares that deal with box plot, but this is considered to be the most simplest form of understanding distribution associated to a given single variable data.
Another type of visualization by which you can understand data is a time series plot. The time series plot actually takes into consideration the temporal component. When you take a look at this graph, you can find various peaks highlighting say key patterns that occurs say often or that occurs very frequently. You can also see from this chart which is plotted for a single variable say for example, if it is going to be sales information, then you can find the peaks highlighting the sales during say various seasons like summers or festival seasons. And sometimes you can also find if this single variable graph is going to be linear in fashion, then you can, you can even understand that there is some kind of relation or association between the parameter x and the parameter on the y axis. This graph highlights a steady growth which is indicated by means of the slope along this particular axis. So, this kind of time series graph will help in understanding a time based data in a very effective way. Another example for time series, suppose if you are going to plot age and weight of various individuals, when we plot we assume that or we come to a conclusion that we may end up with a linear graph meaning as the age increases the weight also increases. But only after plotting the graph we can come to know that it is not a linear pattern, it is a step like pattern which is not very clear in terms of the given data, but when plotted using a time series graph you get this information. So, what is that you can understand or what is that you can explain is we can say whether the data on one axis is growing linearly in other words year by year or can you derive any linear relationship between the age and weight. In other words, if age increases then weight also increases is there any kind of such linear relation that can be identified is what we can derive from time series graph. We can also understand that when we are trying to calculate the weight is there any outlier that is coming into picture because sometimes when you take the weight of kids, the weight of kids is also associated with the clothes they wear during the respective seasons. So, if they are going to wear say woolen cloths during winter season that weight is also considered and therefore, you may also have an outlier introduced which may also in turn affect the pattern given in the time series data. Another way by which you can visualize the given data is say a spatial data which also can be represented using say a map as shown here. In other words, if you are having a data that is going to be geographic which is going to include geographic component then the geographic component need to be represented and visualized in the given data. For example, you may have zip codes or you may have city or state codes or sometimes you may even have latitude and longitude and if you are going to represent this in the form of a graph, then the graph with which you are going to visualize that is a scatter plot. Here the example given is the data collected based on the earthquakes which has occurred in the Pacific Ocean since 1964 till date. And the plots over here indicate the regions where high tremors have occurred or earthquakes with higher Richter scale has been identified. Now, this indicates certain regions in the Pacific Oceans wherein earthquakes occur often and the, 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 the quantity of the earthquake or the severity of the earthquake is also very high or grouped in certain regions. So, these are the two important parameters that can be interpreted from the given scatter plot. Another way by which you can visualize spatial data is choropleth maps. Choropleth maps are making use of different color shadings for representing numerals. The graph given here, the choropleth that is given here is related to availability of water and the stress related to water. In other words, where all you have shortage for water and those regions are highlighted by means of darker shades of red and wherever there is less water scarcity, 
those regions are indicated by yellow shades so the so the shades ranging from dark red till yellow indicates the severity in terms of water shortage having understood the various visualization techniques for single variable now let us understand the various visualization techniques for data sets involving two variables the first type of visualization is scatter plot so scatter plot normally is applicable for numeric values and it is plotted between two axes mathematically it can be defined as a cartesian coordinate environment wherein different data points are plotted in that coordinate system when you take a look at the diagram the graph given here along the x axis we represent the average daily temperatures and along the y axis we represent the number of visitors who visit beach the data points over here indicate the average temperature and the number of visitors to the beach now when you take a look at this diagram this diagram can be treated as a scatter plot since it is plotted between two variables the temperature variable and the visitor variable now when you take a look at the scatter plot you can come up with various inferences which can state whether the two variables which is along the x and y axis are interrelated with each other or is there independent or are they independent of each other such kind of conclusions can be made by looking at the pattern that is exhibited in the scatter plot now when you take a scatter plot like this what are the things that we can understand and answer suppose you have two variables x and y and now we are trying to understand is there any interesting relationship now how these interesting relationships are highlighted because there are various regions in this scatter plot now when you take some data which is in this region you find say there are five data points but they are far apart but if you consider another region as shown here here you may find only four data points which are very far away from each other similarly you can identify few other regions in the scatter plot and if you try to analyze them then you can get to know are these two variables which is along the x and y axis are they interrelated or not in case if they are interrelated then what type of interrelation is this is this going to be a linear relation or a quadratic relation or polynomial relation so fundamentally you are trying to identify the variance of say a variable which is dependent on the other variable we can also try to understand are there any outliers available from a given scatter plot in case if a data like this is given then from this scatter plot we cannot identify or predict any apparent relationship but in case if the scatter plot is looking like this then it may be either a linear relation or the other diagram it can be a quadratic relation in certain scenarios the scatter plot can be homoscedastic or heteroscedastic what do you mean by homoscedastic is whether it is homoscedastic or heteroscedastic both are related to variance of a particular variable with respect to another variable homoscedastic means the variance of the predicted variable is going to be same along the other variable axis heteroscedastic means the variance of the variable y which is determined is going to be different along the x axis or the variable with which we are trying to determine now this can be visualized using these two graphs here in the graph you find the variance say for example i have a line the line is obeying a straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c similarly we have another line governed by the same straight line equation now when you try to identify what is the variance between the data points that lie along this line and the data points that are lie along this line then it is going to be equal variance because when you take a data point lying on this line and another data point lying on this line compute the distance between these two data points it is going to be same as the distance between the data points here in this extreme also or wherever in this range the variance is going to be the same 
if such a kind of scatter plot is there then it is homoscedastic. In case of heteroscedastic the variance of the data points which is governed by the same equation straight line equation may vary when you move along the x axis. So, if you take two data points here on the leftmost extreme of this x axis the difference is going to be very very small when compared with the data points which is considered along the rightmost extreme in the x axis. Along the x axis you will find the variance keeps increasing or it is not going to be the same. Such kind of scatter plot is considered to be a heteroscedastic scatter plot and this clearly indicates what is the variance of one variable say the y variable with respect to the other variable x. You can take an example if y is an annual tax paid and x is income then you can easily say whether it is going to be homoscedastic or heteroscedastic. Another way by which you can represent two variable is the variable value may be continuous in nature. If the value is also continuous you can adopt the scatter plot, but when the number of values is going to be so large and when you plot it, it may look like this. Here in this scenario the number of points is going to be 96000 points and all these 96000 points when plotted using a scatter plot then you may find the data points are very close to each other and hence we may not be in a position to derive any conclusion about the data point. So, what is the alternative for scatter plot when the variable value is going to be continuous. So, instead of using a scatter plot you can go for contour plots. So, contour plots are useful for exploring the potential relationship that may be exhibited between two or more variables. Contour plot actually display it is a three dimensional display of the two variable relationship. Now, when you take a look at this diagram this is an example for a contour plot. Before understanding this let us understand how this contour plot may look like. So, it is like a topographical map it takes for example, a graph uh, circle equation which is defined by z is equal to x square plus y square. Now, for defined values of x that is defined heights of x we can have different contours coming into picture. So, if for the value of z is equal to 1 then we may end up with one circle for the value z is going to be 2 then we may end up with another type of circle and for z is equal to 4 the third type of circle. So, what is that I am trying to say here is the variables x and y behavior may vary based on say the third variable or in other words the third variables behavior can be understood based on variation in the other two variables. This diagram is actually an example for the contour plot highlighting the volcanic eruptions and now the places where you have high volcanic eruptions are indicated by means of yellow shade and the various other shades indicate the other regions where you have less volcanic eruptions. So, now this can be seen as a contour and each and every contour internally indicates variability with respect to another variable. We can also make the same scatter plot as transparent and call that as transparent plotting wherein the objects along the axis are made transparent and this transparency may be varied and when you plot and you find that few of the data points are very close to each other then you may find the regions to be so dense highlighting a darker shade of that color and the rest of the regions will be highlighted with lighter shades because of the transparency that is enforced over the various objects along different axes. We can also make use of a technique called jittering for visualization of scatter plots because when we are trying to work with respect to two variables there is a chance for a combination of value to occur for the given variables many number of time. In such scenarios you may find no variation in terms of the value and hence no correlation can be easily identified between the two variables. For example, if you are calculating the age measured in years and the body weight measured either in pounds or kilograms, we may find 
say large number of peoples in the age group 29 and with say the weight category 70 which is a normal age and weight information. Therefore, what happens is in the scatter plot you may find more values related to 29 and 7 and hence when you take a look at the scatter plot you will find all the datas together into the same region. Therefore, we may not be in a position to arrive at any conclusion about the relationship between the variables called age and the body weight. Now, what we can do is we can introduce some random noise into the two variables or the variable along which we want to understand the relation and when you plot the given noise introduced data then we may clearly find some variation in the scatter plot. So, here in the given scenario there is a small interval for random variable the interval is minus 0.5 to 0.5 and when you apply this information on the given value say the weight value then you may end up with a plot like this. So, here you can see a variable score and the response time if the variable score and response time are occurring more number of time then you will find no variation, but if randomized noise in is introduced into the given variable then you find slighter variation of the same data in the scatter plot. Then the next type of variable with respect to two variables is box plot and here you can make use of the same box plot plotted for more than two variable. You can also make use of stacked bar charts that highlight distribution between various class labels or categorical information. We also have spine plots which are used for visualizing data for two or more quantitative variable it actually provides an overview of the data and makes it easily possible to recognize the relationships. It clearly indicates the proportions in the given data. Here for example, we have male and female candidates who have traveled in a specific traveling uh, transport vehicle. Say for example, the vehicle has met with an accident and the various class of travel and the survival race it indicated. Now, we can plot the given data with three axes indicating three variables the gender, the class of travel and then whether they are survived or not. If this data is going to be plotted then the vertical axis indicates the gender the male or female, the horizontal axis indicates the class of travel first class, second class or third class and the vertical axis also is used for differentiating between percentage of people who have survived the accident and who have died in that accident. Now, this diagram is called as a spine plot providing a complete view of the given data set. So, in summary there are various visualization techniques that help researchers and domain experts to get greater insight into the data and data visualization techniques for one or two variables are very simple and self explanatory, but if the number of variables is two or more then it will be a bit complex. We will be discussing about visualization techniques for two or more variables in the forthcoming sessions. Thank you.